Hey guys, so it's been a little while, but I am back with a new video. Today I'm going to share with you 10 ways to add color to your living room or just your home in general with some tips. Today's video is in partnership with Albany Park, which I'll talk about a little bit more, but spoiler, it's this beautiful couch behind me, a furniture company. So I'm excited to share more about them here in a few minutes. So I feel like the trend in interiors for so long was like super neutral, everything was like tonal and I still find that a very beautiful and appealing look especially in certain spaces it just kind of makes my brain kind of take a break but I love that color and more color and more color and pattern is what is becoming more of a trend in interiors right now so I came up with a list of 10 different ways to add color to your space let's start with the most obvious way to add color to a space which is going to be paint but I feel like there's a more modern way to add paint and color to your walls and that is instead of just painting the walls and leaving like say your trim white or wood or ceilings white and just the walls have the color, now it's painting the entire room in one solid color including the trim and then oftentimes the ceiling itself. So painting your walls in like a an eggshell finish, your trim in a satin finish, and then your ceiling in like a flat finish, but all in the same color. I recently did kind of a version of this to our laundry room, which is definitely going to get remade at some point, but I thought it was a fun way to just like throw in some color, add, like I painted everything that color with the exception of the ceiling, but I still think it'd be pretty to paint the ceiling and the same tone and just like a flat finish as the rest of the walls because it just gives you this like very cozy immersed color feeling and the modern touch of painting your trim the same color as your walls I think just really elevates the space right now when you're adding color and makes it feel less like 90s or something like that or early 2000s when everybody was like throwing those earth tones on the walls which i feel like the colors are different now too but you, you get my vibe so even in our basement here we have a trim all the way around that i added and i painted the trim the wall portion and then the bottom um trim also all the same color actually all the same finish and then another fun way to add color is almost like the reverse of it leaving your walls neutral and then painting your trim a color and right now I feel like we're seeing a lot of like grays and even like green grays um, blue grays but so many people have done really cool colors for their trim and I think that that's such a fresh take on adding color to a space and I love when people have crown molding and they also paint that the same color as their trim and then another really pretty trend that I've seen is when you have like the crown molding and then you carry that color that you paint your crown molding up onto your ceiling so this could be like doing all of that trim color in that color or I've seen it where people have everything else kind of like neutral in the bottom half maybe like a you know soft white um, walls with the same kind of trim but in a different sheen and then they paint their ceiling a really dark color or like a bold color which I think is such a cool look so if you're not ready to like paint your entire walls trim ceiling a color you can start introducing colorful furniture like a beautiful green velvet couch behind me from albany park this is their kova sectional and think of like the restoration cloud couch but for like a fraction of the cost this thing is humongous it's down in our basement living room so i felt like it was a fun place to take a leap in color choice for the furniture itself because it's not like a space we're in every day and so adding like a really bold they have also this really beautiful like rust color and i just kept flip-flopping between the two but i actually ended up on a green color and the reason for it is well i love the color in general and green to me is just like probably my favorite color but when Joel and I first moved in together my husband and I we got our very first couch was a green color like this and it just kind of like play, pays homage and it just reminds me of that every time so that's why I ended up going with the green but I think the rust velvet color that they have is just stunning they also have some more neutral colors if you're not ready to take the plunge and do um, color or maybe you decided to paint your walls a very bold color and now you need some neutral furniture they also have neutral options as well but they have a ton of really beautiful colorful fun furniture the company was actually started by a husband and wife team and i absolutely love supporting small businesses and i 
think that their pieces are awesome. So our basement is actually kind of hard to get down to and we moved one couch down here and just your standard size couch and it took like four of us to figure out how to get it down because we have like a sharp turn and then you come down an L-shaped stairs and this comes in kind of all smaller boxes and then you can assemble it into the space. So it was a breeze for Joel and I to move down here and assemble. It was really easy to assemble. And I also love that everything has zippers. So if you have kids or pets, you just zip it right off and you can wash it. I don't know if I'd put it in the, in the washer, um, but like I could really get in there and try and clean out a stain or bring it somewhere for them too. And for me, that is like one of the best features in furniture is to be able to zip off the cover. It's probably hard to see the scale of how big this couch is, but it is the most cozy, wonderful couch for watching movies. We've watched many a Disney movies down here because my daughter's three and that's what we watch now. And it is the perfect family lounge. You could probably fit like at least five to six people, I think comfortably on this couch because it's so deep, like, let me see if I can show you. <laughs> like, my feet don't touch, like, they don't even go over. It's awesome. See, it's a really big couch. I also love that you can build out the style of your couch. So I have what is like a true L sectional. They don't sell this as its own individual piece, but if you were to get the um, their L sectional and then add the corner, to your um, Carter order, then you would get the same configuration that I have, which is just a true L-shaped sectional. They were kind enough to offer a coupon code. Their furniture is already really, really affordable and super budget-friendly and renter-friendly because it's so easy to move, um, but they did offer a coupon code, so if you're interested in that, take a look in the description below for the code and then a link to their website. So like I said, I just love supporting small businesses, businesses started by people of color, and so I'm incredibly happy to support Albany Park and to share their beautiful furniture with you. Under tip number three, this is another renter-friendly tip or somebody who can't paint their walls or not ready to take the plunge in painting their walls to add a bunch of color, is to paint their furniture. One of my favorite things to paint would be like chairs and dressers. Those are, I think, furniture pieces that just naturally feel like they could definitely come in a different color, even sometimes coffee tables. Um, but painting a dresser in like a cool pop color or painting your dining chairs in a fun color or even like your bar stools if you have a kitchen peninsula or island I think is a fun way to add a lot of color interest and um, infuse color into a space that might be kind of neutral right now. But a tip when painting your furniture is to always prep properly so sanding and cleaning it really well using a primer and then always use an enamel based paint for furniture that way you get a really hard finish and it won't chip this might this tip might be my most favorite and my personal way of adding a lot of color to a space is with rugs i absolutely love vintage rugs beautiful rugs i love all the rugs my budget can't necessarily afford all of the beautiful rugs so i opt to find really cool vintage ones on either etsy or ebay or there are other rug companies out there that make like reproduction thin rugs that have a lot of color and a similar color story that you'll see in vintage rugs so you can add some really fun colors to a space because some of those vintage rugs have like these burnt oranges and reds and greens and pinks and I just think that they add a lot of interest to a space. And when you are planning out a room and you're planning on adding color, start with your rug because it can often be the hard thing to go backwards into because it can help you decide on the paint color in a space. So if you already have like picked your paint color before the rug, it can be hard. It's like fitting like a square peg into a round hole sometimes to find a color or like a rug that matches what you already have going. So if you're able to, start by choosing your rug for your color story in a room. It's also a really fun way to add a lot of color to say like a bedroom because uh, you know a lot of times people have right now I think a lot of like that white linen neutral bedding which is beautiful with wood tones and it's very tonal and cozy 
and adding a really colorful, cool, vintage-inspired rug or vintage rug adds a ton of color and interest to a space. Plus, if you get a true vintage rug, probably no one else has a rug like that. And I just think that's kind of cool too. Rugs can be kind of on the more expensive side if you get true um, vintage rugs, but a fun way is if you have a pretty neutral kitchen, I feel like a lot of people have very neutral kitchens, is to get a truly vintage runner rug. Usually those are pretty affordable, like maybe a couple hundred dollars, and they'll add so much color and interest to a kitchen space. Another way to add a lot of color to a space is with your artwork. So you could get a really large canvas. This is something that I did with my daughter and thought it was kind of fun, is we got a really big canvas from Michael's. It was like part of a sale or it was 50% off, and I picked I kind of curated some colors for her and she made this really, I put it outside and she just like went to town and painted it. You could use more saturated colors for it too, but creating some sort of like impressionist um, abstract artwork is a fun way to add affordably a large scale piece of art. Another thing is I have a really cool tapestry hanging up over there that is kind of like a rug meets a tapestry um, and hanging those things up on the wall adds a lot of softness and texture and then a lot of times a lot of color. And then there's obviously just you know curating art in more bold colors and grouping those colors maybe into a gallery to create a really big color payoff. So kind of finding a color story in a gallery and pulling that together with maybe five to seven frames could add a really bold impact to a space. So tip number six is to change out your window treatments and add a color to them, or even more exciting to me is a pattern right now. I think patterns and color is having just such a moment and it's becoming such a fresh take on it too with like wallpapers. They're just beautiful right now. It's not like the 80s wallpapers that we remember. It's like these really beautiful prints and it's usually just that on the whole wall versus like the 80s was a, like a lower border, an upper, so a lot of pattern mixing. And right now it's more of like these really beautiful, fully immersed feelings of wallpaper and taking even that wallpaper color, that like um, background wallpaper color, up onto the ceiling and or onto your trim. That's what I did in our um, powder bath because it's such a small space. I wanted it to just be this like wow when you walked in there because a lot of the rest of my house on that level is very neutral and white because of the way our ceilings are and it just made more sense to paint everything neutral and white. And so you walk into this little powder bath and it has like this really intense color saturation to it and it feels very all encompassing because I brought that color up onto the ceiling and then onto the trim in a different sheen. But back to window treatment <laughs> is picking a window treatment with a pop of color. So we did this in our bedroom where I got this kind of like mustard camel mixed color um, and it added a really kind of I mean, I guess it's still a neutral, but for me, I lived in such a neutral, neutral world. I'm taking baby steps towards adding color and I'm getting more bold and it's fun. I painted my daughter's room kind of like a purpley pink color in the best way possible. <laughs> and I love it and I think it turned out really well. Um, but that kind of mustardy camel color adds a lot of like color and uh, personality to our living or our bedroom, which is a very, very neutral space. So for me, I think when you're adding um, colorful curtains to a space, maybe sticking with either like a velvet or a linen, I think is a bit more sophisticated than some of the like polyester or like manufactured fabrics that you can find at like your targets or other shops. They just don't have the same like richness that I think if you're gonna add color, it can make it feel a little dorm-like or something like that. So. For me, I would stick with either a linen or a velvet type of material in a really saturated color or go all in with pattern that has a lot of color to it. If you own your home, another fun way to add color to a space and like create a really cool first impression for people coming to your house is to paint your front door. We painted at our old house our front door like this navy color which I think is really beautiful. But I have a soft spot in my heart for people who paint their front doors pink. I just think that it is absolutely so adorable and 
it just creates a vibe and it has to be done on the right house because our current house would look kind of funny with a pink door it's a very traditional like 2000 builder grade house um, so I'm trying to find the right color to add like some either a pop to the front door I haven't figured it out yet but even like a sage green color is beautiful or like a mustard color uh, I just think that when people go bold on their front door it is beautiful so if you're still like not totally sold on painting a whole room or painting furniture there are just little ways you can add color slowly and kind of build up your color tolerance <laughs> as we come out of I think I think neutrals will always be a thing but I I do think that people are just really gravitating towards more color and um, pattern and less tonal looks in their space and they just want a little bit more personality to shine through and a fun ways to do that without committing to too much is literally things like adding bowls of fruit to your kitchen adding like plants to a space because those are green and that's color you know in contrast to like your creams and grays and stuff in the background you can use really beautiful colorful pottery in your kitchen if you have like kind of a neutral kitchen um you can add like little pieces of color throughout your home and it doesn't have to just be throwing in like a colorful throw pillow because i think that's like the tip that people hear all the time but i I'm not into like color pop pillows. It's just maybe that's a, um, what is it? Like an unpopular opinion maybe is I am not into color popped pillows. I don't really like that. I don't, I don't even really like like seasonal pillows. I'm not into that like vibe of changing out my pillows with seasons. I would rather just have a couple of really good neutral ones and really build out my color story outside of changing out pillows personal preference unpopular opinion <laughs> so for me it's changing out like the bowl i put my fruit in on my kitchen island or changing out even like my dish towels those can kind of change from lighter in the spring summer time to maybe more saturated colors during the fall and winter those are things that I can maybe change out seasonal. I'm just not like a seasonal decor person at all. But for me, adding a bunch of flowers throughout a space and changing those seasonally, that is just like what warms my heart in a way to change out seasonal decor because you can have beautiful, colorful um, tulips in the springtime to then peonies and lilacs in the later spring, early summer. And then in the summer months, usually you kind of have like a plethora of flowers to pick from. Um, and then towards the fall, you can add pops of yellow and burnt colors, like with um, those cone flowers or sunflowers or mums even. And then as you go into the winter time, you have a lot of um, like reds and dark um, evergreens, and you can kind of play with those like darker emerald jewel tone type of flowers, which I just think are absolutely beautiful and for me that's the way I want to change out my decor seasonally and then another really easy way my last tip to um, add some color to your space is just introducing even some throw blankets for me that's something I'll change out seasonally because it feels appropriate from where I live to change it out seasonally um, I have all four seasons here in Minnesota so I truly in the spring and summers need like a lightweight um, throw blanket to kind of cozy up with when I need it and then in the fall and winter we got to bust out like the thick cozy cozy throw blanket so it is practical as well as a beautiful way to change out some color in my space so even just throwing it over a neutral couch or chair can add a pop of color if you find a really cool um, like cozy fall blanket and maybe a rust color or something like that I think is just absolutely beautiful. And those blankets are a great way to even introduce pattern into a space whether it is floral or stripe or kind of a vintage inspired pattern. I think it's really beautiful. Even quilts. I'm having a moment with quilts and I just absolutely love them and I want a lot of quilts in my life right now. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed these tips for adding color to your home. I think that it's so fun to see color coming into style and interiors and I can't come from a place of like super neutral so I'm like taking baby steps with everybody too towards color but um, there's some people who just are doing color so well in interiors. I'll leave a couple links of some Instagram accounts that really inspire me to go bold with color and pattern and I think that 
it's just a fun way to kind of also develop your own interior style is by learning what colors you kind of gravitate towards and things like that. For me, a good way to start in figuring out what colors to add to my space, if you're like very neutral like I am, is to look at your wardrobe and look at the colors that you already have in your wardrobe. So like for me, it's a lot of greens and kind of rust colors and like camels, which are kind of neutral, but um, navies or types of blues. And then even into like soft coral, peachy pinks I still think are beautiful. So the, that's like a good starting off point I think for when you're trying to pick what colors to introduce to a space just take a look at what you already have in your wardrobe and generally you're gonna like those in your interiors too. So thank you guys so much for watching. Take a look at Albany Park in the description below. This, like I said, is the Kova sectional and I'll leave links to the um, like makeup of how I have the L shape here. And you can see some of their other stuff. They have a lot of really beautiful, colorful furniture and some really neat patterns on their website too. So thank you so much for partnering with me on this video at Albany Park and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in my next video. Bye.